Well, the devil's in the detail, as they say. So stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, before we go into the details side of things, let's have a look at what I've been up to. You can see now I've got the fence running along the outside and in there. I've also put some fencing, some Harris fencing along the back there and put these steps in. And they do have actual steps in there, if you can see that. Uh, there's a pallet just there and a load of bins. And obviously one of those has got its lid open. Uh, that was downloaded from Thingiverse and with a slight modification just to get the lid to do what I wanted it to do. At the back there, when you can make those out, we've got some sandbags, some like uh, ton sandbags. If I go around that side, you might see them a little bit better. OK, um, coming around here now, you've got. We've got these um, pill these well, metal pillars, I suppose, um, which are just there propping up this piece here, this lintly bit, and also these little guard uh, crash barrier bits going around the bottom. That was quite an interesting one to 3D print, downloaded from Thingiverse, but I had to modify it quite a bit to um, get it into Engage. Uh, it came out as double O gauge and it just wouldn't wouldn't print at all when I reduced it. it was too, the parts were too thin. So lots of modification. Um, so obviously you can see I'm going up a bit further now. I've got this girder in and that is the same on both sides. And there is a little bit of wall there and that leaves a nice gap ready for the bridge to come out as I showed you earlier. This bit here, this concrete lintel, and again, that's painted again on the inside. And there's a bit of wall going around there. Obviously, these parts here, and the one at the end, do need copings on them, so please don't look at that too closely yet. Right, first up then, I'm going to be looking at the paths. Now you'll see I've put this piece in here now, and I've done that so that the road comes around and then there's a sharp corner as it goes around that one. So it is a bit like a half a pear drop type shape. The paper I'm going to use is um, comes from Scale Scenes and you can see it's from the roads and pavements kit there. You can see which one that is. Now I am going to cut it so that there are strips like that and then place it on so that the path comes in this direction and the same in that. Right, very quickly, there's the other path and you can see that I've put things on in a very staggered way. So obviously once this is dry, I need to just cut that out. Um, I'll probably use a pair of scissors and then I need to run around the edge of that with a pen of some description. <laughs> Right, welcome back. So you can see I've stuck the path down now with glue, but you might be thinking, well, what's this all got to do with detail? Because to be honest with you, you've just stuck on a textured paper. But the detail comes, if you can see, I've actually gone round and cut along all the lines with the scalpel. And I've just glued it down and put glue over the top just in case any of the parts start to lean. The next stage is to give it a coat of varnish and I'm going to varnish all the way down, right up inside there, because the next section of road markings is going to be double yellow lines and such going right up inside in that. Okay, it's a bit soon. So you can see I've cut the finest of strips, and it's literally just a case of putting it on, initially just pressing it on and dabbing it. Try not to touch the sticky side too much, but just putting it on by pressing it in certain places, just every now and again, just give it a little press. Right, so that's, that's up done. Now for the double yellow lines. Double yellow lines are running right around here and then into there. And they also, if I bring the camera up a bit, 
they come out of here and round. Now, there is technically a path here and a bit of a path here, but to be honest with you, I think it'd be quite complicated to put it in. So I'm just going to use the double yellow line. I'm using, this time I'm using some blue stuff, but it doesn't make the slightest jot of difference. My normal Pritt stick will do just the job. So I literally just trap it between my finger and just pull it over the top. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And I normally go twice. And that puts a reasonable amount of glue on the surface. And then it's a case of placing it on. Now I'm going to put it so that it's overlapping here. And then curve it round. Again, just pressing. And just put it on, pressing it every now and again. There. And I do need to bring this bit out. Right, just to show you the white lines going down the middle. Now you can probably see there's a grey line as well. Um, I've just used the Scale Scenes uh, white line kit and what I propose to do is at the end of each white line, both sides, is just give it a little snip with the scalpel and then peel up the grey bit. So again, I'll show you that shortly. Well, that's all the road markings done, pretty much. So you can see I've put some white lines down here now. I don't think they're actually there, but never mind. <laughs> um, I can't see down the back there from Google Maps, but I think the double yellow lines go down sort of behind there, and certainly the white lines continue and, um, down. I've done the hatching, this was literally just cut out, and um, from the scale scenes hatching bit on the mode marking section, as was that arrow in the background there, and um, the the crossing was literally just rectangles of paper just stuck down so it's it's getting there um, the speed bump was 3d printed and then marked off painted yellow marked off five millimeter gaps and then just painted with or colored over with a pen As the video is called The Devil's in the Detail, one of the things I do want to do is include signs. So I've printed this off, and yes, it is so small, but the fact that there's something there, it doesn't even matter if you can't read it, the fact that there's something there just gives the impression that it's been thought about. And I think, to be honest, that is quite important if you want it to look fairly realistic to have. Um, now, the one thing about the whole thing at the moment is it does look very, very clean. Okay, I'll show you what I do to dull it down. Um, lines around here seem to be fairly freshly painted, but inside this area, in the car park in here, is all quite dull. So I'm literally just put some dark grey paint onto a piece of paper, and as you can see, I'm dry brushing it out. So I'm literally just going to go over the top and just obliterate some of it. Not completely, by any means, but I want it to look quite a lot more worn away. And there is a definite line where that one stops and then and the old one kind of carries on if you like. Well, there we go. As I pan you down now, you can see all the details that have been added this video. So starting at the back, you've got the little fences and the sign, the steps. You can see in the background there, you've got the blue bins and there's a pallet. 
behind there. You might just be able to make out the sandbags between the brick pillar and the red pillar. Sort of down there, excuse the finger. Oops, <laughs> that was a bit big, wasn't it? Coming out. Got the road markings here, which is obviously the double yellow lines and the white line going around there. The bridge is still placed, it's not glued or anything, but I have made the base now. So you get an idea of what that's gonna look like. And the, the yellow lines go into the car park. You can see I've made the barriers now. There's a little fence in there and hatch lines. We've got these um, metal pillars here or, uh, with the crash barrier bits around the bottom. Going inside, you can see there's more fence at the back there and some more fencing sort of down there at the end of the uh, pathway. Yes, and it does appear from the pictures that it's blocked off. I don't know why, but maybe somebody knows. And the little um, speed hump in there, obviously to stop people from zooming down there. And uh, I've, I've left the roof off for the time being, but you, so you can see we've got the more double yellow lines going down there. And the white lines down through the middle as well. And I've even popped a couple of cars in there as well just to give the impression yeah. so there we go hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, hopefully next time we'll get it done no promises <laughs> we'll see you next time take care of yourself bye for now